you work out so much, you're dancing 24 seven, so no wonder you have like the body of your lifetime. I started uh, developing a really unhealthy view of my body. An eating disorder is different in a lot of different ways. You can't stop thinking about your body, how you look, what you, how you should eat. Um, you're counting the calories, you're, you're sizing up your legs and all those different things. You're just kind of completely gripped by it and that's kind of where I was. Hey y'all, I'm Sadie Robertson Huff and today I am unfiltered from my home. My makeup routine, it, it, you know, I will say it fluctuates day to day. And to be honest, quarantine, I don't do a lot of makeup, that's, that's for sure. And that's kind of been a blessing. I think the first time I recognized beauty, my aunt was in town and she said, your mother is just exquisite. And I said, what's exquisite mean? And she said, it just means that she's just so naturally beautiful. And so I think I noticed it most with my mom and my aunt saying that, and then my grandma and my great grandma, they were just my pictures of beauty. You know, the biggest foundation in my life, more than this foundation that is so silly and doesn't last, uh, would definitely be my family and my faith. My family means everything to me. My husband is such a rock in my life. He's so solid, he'll always be that. I know that if the whole world was against me, they would be for me. And my faith too. I mean, if I face planted in front of the whole world tomorrow, I would depend on the solid foundation of my faith for sure. So I grew up in West Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, I actually grew up in a little bit smaller town, Calhoun, and we always joke that there's more chickens than people, and that's just a fact. I'm such a small town girl. I love the fact that every time you go outside, like if you go to a restaurant, you're gonna see at least three people you know. All right, we'll probably go to blush next, give myself a little color. You sent 9,300 text messages in a month. Is that bad? You know, being thrown into the public eye, I think at any age is definitely crazy. Um, but being thrown into the public eye when you're a freshman in high school and you are from a really small town, it, it's definitely crazy. It, it's unheard of. Actually doing it with my family made it a whole lot easier. So now I'm going to be looking back at some of my favorite and not so favorite Duck Dynasty moments. A little gas, a little gas. Whoa, no, 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 not that oh. hard, not that hard, not that hard. You know, there are some milestones in my life that definitely didn't make it on the show. Now I'm married, uh, I've started the ministry that I, that I do now, but at the time, what I am really glad that made it is when I learned how to drive. Oh, oh all right. She oh, is even terrible. Good gracious. Uh, even though it was so embarrassing at the time, because whenever you're 16, everything's embarrassing, right? And I was terrible in front of literally the whole world watching and it was just it was just bad Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh my like dance with boys dance or i mean dance with Bo, my boyfriend you have a boyfriend yeah like yes, for two months no 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 I will say, I did not want to show my boyfriend at the time who I was dating on Duck Dynasty because literally after we broke up forever, people would be like, oh, are y'all still dating? Are y'all still together? And then you're like, no, we're not. But he will always be known as my Duck Dynasty boyfriend. <laughs> I think Sadie in real life is different than portrayed on television because at the time on TV, I think I was just a little bit more nervous. In real life, I am like straight up goofball. Are we just gonna play? It was funny, I remember the first episode that I watched, I was like so embarrassed. I was like, my voice is so country. And since then I've gotten a lot more confident in who I am and the voice that the Lord gave me. All right guys, I'm gonna be talking today about responding to the call of God on your life, okay? My journey with my faith is the biggest part of my story. Faith is hugely important to me. It's not just important to me because it was important to my family. It was important to me because uh, whenever I met Jesus, it, it like literally changed my life. After Dancing with the Stars happened, I didn't know what I wanted to do, honestly. I was in this place where like my life just dramatically changed so much. I went from living in West Monroe, Louisiana. Um, to now being on Dancing with the Stars in Hollywood with 20 million people watching every week and the spotlight just literally being on me. And 
there's a million beautiful things that come with that. But a lot of other things come from that too, you know? And for me, I started struggling with a lot of insecurity of who I was because of a lot of people telling me who I am and not really feeling like that was me. I remember thinking these thoughts, like, I don't know how to be that like famous girl that everybody loves and like, you know, follows on Instagram. And I remember praying and saying, God, like, I think you chose the wrong person. Like, I, this, this makes me nervous. Like, this, it makes me insecure. This is not something I'm thriving in. This is when I realized this is, my faith is actually going to be like everything to me. The Lord said something so sweet to my heart. I just felt like God was saying like, I'm not calling you to be this perfect person. I'm actually just calling you to be a sister and a friend to those who don't have a sister and a friend. I can be confident because I was created on purpose for a purpose. All of a sudden, like I was so empowered to do everything that I'm doing now. And that's just my story. But man, like that's why my faith is so important to me. I'm gonna do my eyeshadow and this is actually kind of fun because this palette is the palette that um, I use at my wedding. I uh, used to struggle with anxiety so much and it's funny because um, it wasn't really until I called it fear that I really tried to fix the problem. I say that because I think a lot of times we can, you know, fall on the excuse, if you will, of, oh, I'm just an anxious person. But for me, I knew it was beyond that. Like, it was fear gripping my life. Like, you know it's a problem whenever you run off of an airplane, like make the pilot stop and say, I have to get off the plane because I believe this plane is going to crash. Like, fear begins to drive your life. I think my fear, a lot of it was stemming from the fear of being alone um, in a weird way. What if like everybody just turned their back on me? And like in that little like lie of fear of like, what if you're in this alone? But again, like my faith is what helped me through that. But the most important thing in my heart is God. I wasn't actually given a spirit of fear when I was created, but I was given a spirit of power and love and a sound mind and I can rise to that. It helped me start denying those fears and those anxieties that would come in my head and know that like, you know what, I know that I feel this way, but my feelings don't define what the truth is in my life. Now I'm going to do my favorite part, my eyebrows. I don't know about y'all, but I love a good eyebrow. During Dance with the Stars, you work out so much, you're dancing 24 seven, so no wonder you have like the body of your lifetime. People started to comment on, you know, you look great, your body looks great. And there were so innocent comments at first, like everything was great. But then whenever my body started looking a little different, that's when the struggle came in. And there were people in my life who were just really negative influences that would say things that were just not uplifting about the way that I looked and how I needed to maintain uh, the body that I had. And it was so wrong. I mean, at the time, I just was insecure and so I just believed them and felt like, oh, I need to push it. I started uh, developing a really unhealthy view of my body. An eating disorder is different in a lot of different ways. You can't stop thinking about your body, how you look, what you, how you should eat. Um, you're counting the calories, you're, you're sizing up your legs and all those different things. You're just kind of completely gripped by it and that's kind of where I was. And so you don't realize that like the things you're struggling with, you think it's just about you, but actually it affects like a lot of other people around you um, because you're not able to be the person that is for the people around you. I pretty much just took the word as it was from the Bible. It talks about how you are beautifully and wonderfully created. And I started like praising God and thanking Him for the way that I looked instead of looking in the mirror and saying, oh, I wish my arms were thinner. I wish my legs were more toned. I wish I had her eyebrows. I wish I had her waistline. I wish I had a better thigh get Whatever it was that I would tell myself, instead of like, I wish, I'd just be like, you know what? I'm so thankful that I have this. I'm so thankful that my legs actually serve the purpose that they should and that they're able to run, that my arms are able to carry things, that, you know, my stomach <laughs> one day hopefully be able to to carry a baby, like just actually what we're actually designed and created for. And it definitely uh, made me start to stop thinking about myself as much actually, and be able to think about others and how you can actually serve others with the body that you've been given. It's crazy when we think about that really. Having a big social media following comes with good and bad for sure. I think the best thing about having a social media following is because it's so many people that you can 
encourage and influence and um, be a light to. Like that's that's amazing. I did not overlook that gift a single day of my life. The bad thing about having a social media following also is kind of the same thing. There are so many people and so many people have so many comments about every single thing that you do. And that can be hard. This is what I truly believe, honestly, is that, you know, we live in a, you've heard it, a canceled culture. You know, somebody says something you disagree with, you cancel them, you unfollow them, you block them, you don't want to listen to them. And I think we got to be better, you know, than that. I think, you know, we... We gotta rise above those differences in the sense that like it's okay that somebody disagree disagrees with you. It's okay that somebody thinks a different thing from you. But I would hope that people would be a little bit more kind to not just feel like, oh you don't agree with me, block, cancel. It's like, oh you don't agree with me, let me hear you out. And and saying that, I gotta do the same for other people who might disagree with me. My makeup tip. I'm a pretty casual makeup goer. I will say I have watched all the, the YouTube videos trying to learn. I just do a little curl and this thing takes it away, I'm telling you. I love Marc Jacobs. I've had so many uh, fan letters and messages and posts that I've been tagged in that have truly like stopped me in my tracks. Um, I've had one girl actually, it was the craziest story. I was um, writing my book, Live. I was on my last day to write the book. I was up late, it was like one in the morning. Cause it was like late. I had like needed to get that book in, turned in tomorrow and I was not quite there yet. And I was writing about choosing life and if you're on the brink of death and if you're considering that your life isn't valuable, I need you to rethink it because your life was created for purpose, on purpose, all these things. As I'm typing, it was, I felt the weirdest thing in my heart. Kind of talks about the Lord speaking. It's not like it was audible. I just felt it in my heart that I need to go check my Instagram DMs. And I looked at my messages and I had a message just come in and it said, Hey Sadie, um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to take my life tonight. I saw your message on YouTube, you preaching, and it really encouraged me. And I want you to know that before I take my life that I did watch that. And I don't know why I'm messaging you to tell you that. And she said, but keep doing what you're doing. It's making a difference in the world. And I was like, oh my gosh. When you find love, you find your purpose. Your purpose is to love no matter where you are. And so I messaged her real quick and I said, hey, I hope I caught you in time, but please let's reconsider. Like, I, wanna, I would love to chat with you. And she said, I can't believe you just responded. I'm literally sitting here with my phone in one hand and a bottle of pills in the other. So we all have influence. And when somebody is following you in their life, you never know when they come, when they come to you, what they're going through. When I think about my influence or my fame or my following, that's what I think about. Like the fact that I had a girl message me at two in the morning telling me, thank you for the impact you made on my life that's about to end. And I was able to encourage her back to life. Sorry, I know I went so deep. While we're doing our makeup in quarantine, this truly is unfiltered. Now we are continuing on our Marc Jacobs train. This is not sponsored. Ad, not an ad. I wish I spoke up to guys that I did in the past who just didn't treat me right, to be honest. I wish I spoke up to the guy who was constantly talking about the way that my body looks and could be better. And if I would have just spoken up for myself or stood up for myself, that would have saved me a lot of hurt. However, you do grow from those things. And now that I'm married to Christian, who um, is just the most encouraging and affirming person ever, finding your voice in those times will save you from a long couple of nights of crying. <laughs> it's just life. Okay, all done with my makeup. Beauty has evolved for me, um, I think in a couple of different ways in my life. I think just the maturity of how I see beauty has grown a lot. I think a lot of times we say we want inner beauty, but we seek to strive for outer beauty. What really helped me with the evolution of beauty is understanding that it's not actually about being the most beautiful person in the world. It's about the beauty that radiates from the inside of you and off of you and how that can actually captivate somebody's attention who loves you. Think about that with faith too. There's a lot of beautiful things in the world. There's a lot of attractive things in the world, but I am captivated by God. I am captivated by faith. I'm captivated by my family, by my husband. And therefore I don't have to go and wander out in the world to these other things because I'm content and what I'm captivated.
to buy. And I think that's one of those beauty tips for me that has stuck with me and that has actually made me more confident than the makeup on my face ever will.